Hi there, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Folding at Home, which is a medical research application that you can run on your computer or even Raspberry Pis. And I'm going to show you how to use that so that you can quote unquote mine Banano. Now I say quote unquote because you don't actually mine Banano because Banano is not really a mineable coin, it, but the developers are e evenly distributing Banano and one way they're doing that is by people uh, using folding at home to do medical research. Now I think this is really awesome. It probably won't last forever so the earlier you do it the better and um, it, they will reward you no matter how little you contribute as long as you complete work units so even using a Raspberry Pi will still get you a reasonable amount of Banano every day. So the first thing that you want to do if you haven't already is create a wallet. So go to the banano.cc website, click wallets. Now there's two wallets. One's the um, phone wallet, which is I believe on iPhone and uh, Android called Calium. It's a very nice wallet. Or you can use the desktop web version called Banana Vault, which I have one of both. So just click on this and then it'll guide you through the steps of how you create it. I already have one created, so it will already pick mine up. And then from here, you're going to want to see this is your receive address. So you can just copy that whenever uh, we need it in, uh, to create our folding at home account. So getting on to how to install folding at home in the first place. Well, we're going to use this excellent guide that I found. Um, and I'll link this in the description below. So here's a, a guide for installing folding at home on a Raspberry Pi. So you will need a Raspberry Pi 3B or a 4 since these are the only 64-bit processors. And not only that, you will need to install a 64-bit OS. So the first thing you need is, of course, to insert the SD card into your computer. Now, if you need help setting up the Raspberry Pi itself, like gluing on the um, heat sinks on it, just follow the booklet that comes with the Kinetic kit. If you buy it with that, I highly suggest buying it as a kit. Um, but moving on. So l luckily for this guide, it shows you exactly where to get these 64-bit images because the uh, Pi imager actually does not contain it. So you want to click on the light version because we're going to do a he headless setup to give it the maximum um, power that it can work so it doesn't have to run any processes using the GUI or for the GUI or desktop interface. All right, so we're going to click on this. And then you're going to want to install the latest version. So the latest version for the 64 OS is uh, the 2021-0409. Now, I actually already have this downloaded. But if you click this, it should start downloading. Uh, or, sorry, you have to first click which one you want. So if you're on Windows, you're going to want to click the zip file. And then it will start in, uh, downloading that file. So I already have mine installed and unzipped. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the guide. Okay, so then you're going to want to install the Pi OS Imager. Uh, I'll link this address in the description below. You're going to want to download it for your cur current OS, so for Windows. And then once you have that installed and you have the SD card uh, plugged into your computer, you're going to want to launch um, the Pi Imager. Alrighty, and then you're going to want to choose the OS. So like I said before, the Pi Imager currently only has the 32-bit OSs on it. That's because those are the only stable OS currently. The 64-bit is still kind of in testing. So you're going to want to scroll all the way down, use custom, and then you're going to want to navigate to your uh, image file. So the ARM 64 Lite. I believe you can also use the zip file. You don't have to unzip it. And then click open. And then next you're going to want to choose the uh, mounted device that you have. Make sure that you choose the correct one. As you can see here, I have another disk that's um, you know two uh, terabytes. So I definitely don't want to choose that. I want to choose the 32 gig gigabyte SD. And then now you're going to want to click right, click yes, because it needs to confirm that you want to erase all of the data on that drive. I currently already had a Pi image on this, so that's why this is popping up. But if you have a clean um, SD card, this right here should not pop up. So let's go ahead and let that finish. And uh, 
Okay, so once the S or the SD card is done flashing, you might be encountered with this little Windows block. You can just click OK. Don't click Format Disk. Click Canceled, and then now we're going to want to modify some of the boot files so that it uh, enables SSH and we configure the uh, the wireless connection. However, whenever it's done flashing, it always disappears for me, so I have to unplug the USB uh, SD adapter and then plug it back in. And then once I do, you'll come across these Windows boxes. Again, just click Cancel, don't click OK, or Format Disk. And then now you'll see probably two different um, drive letters associated with this one USB, one with the boot and one that says USB drive. You're going to want to click on the one that says boot. In my case, it's the G drive. And then when you click on that, you're going to be in the root of this uh, boot drive folder. So now we're going to want to add a um, SSH file with no file extension. So the, if you don't see these .txt or .dat uh, file extensions, you're going to want to go to view and then check this little hidden item, or not hidden items, the, check the file name extensions to have these shown. And then what you want to do is right click, click new, do text uh, document, type in SSH, and then go to the end of the line and delete the TXT and the dot. Windows will actually if you, ask you if you want to change the file extension, you say yes. And now we're going to want to configure the uh, wireless connection. So we're going to create another file do right click, new, text document. And we're going to call this WPA with an underscore, which is just shift uh, the dash and then supplicant. And then we're going to change the file extension from TXT to CONF for config file. Click yes. And then in this configuration file, we're going to want to open it up. And then from the website that we're following the guide on, we're going to want to copy this configuration. And just to uh, check right here, you can just copy and paste the file name because this has to be right in order for this to work. So if you don't, if you're afraid of typos, I would just copy and paste that. But if you, once you have the file open, copy this and then paste it into your configuration file. If you live outside the U.S., you might want to change the country to which you live in, and then. Under SSID, you're going to want to enter in your network's name. And then for the PSK, that's going to be the password for your Wi Fi network. Then you just want to click File, Save, and then go ahead and close that. And now we can uh, eject the SD card. Again, you can click cancel on those. You'll right click this and click eject. All right, so now you're gonna wanna put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, turn it on. Now, after you turn it on, we're gonna wanna find the uh, IP address of this. And if you don't have any tools to find the IP address like ZenMap, you can always plug a monitor into the Raspberry Pi and when it picks up an IP address, it will show you on the monitor. Um, and then you, you can actually follow the rest of the guide uh, using the monitor and a keyboard. However, I'm going to be using SSH to finish up the uh, in, install of the folding at home. All right. Now, if you are using ZenMap uh, to locate the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, what you want to do is just type in your network address doing so mine's going to be 10.0.0. And then the last um, section, you're just going to replace that with an asterisk. So it should be uh, three numbers, uh, three dots, and then one asterisk. And then you're going to want to change the intent scan to a ping scan and then click scan. Now you can also you probably log into your router, which is um, probably your network address with a one at the end of it and then try to find uh, the Raspberry Pi that way, the IP address. So in my case, the uh, Raspberry Pi has not finished booting up yet, so we'll have to run the scan again. Okay, I just ran the scan again, and now it is showing up. This, so this is another Raspberry Pi on the network, so that's how I know it wasn't that one. 
And the one right above where it says Raspberry Pi, the IP address, is going to be the one we're looking for. Now, if it's been a couple minutes and this still doesn't show up, I highly suggest plugging in a monitor, seeing if it picked up IP address. If you don't see one on the monitor, maybe your wireless connection or your, wire, your WPA config file uh, wasn't correctly entered. In that case, you might want to try to uh, look at that or just plug in an Ethernet cable directly into the Raspberry Pi. So once we have the IP address, we can use PuTTY to SSH into it. And then let me go ahead and change the font size. And then when this window pops up, you're going to want to click yes. The default login is Pi. The default password is Raspberry. And then you are going to want to listen to this little security risk thing telling you to change your password. This is just an example video, so I will not be doing this, but I highly suggest that you do do it. Although, uh, I'm not sure who wants to break into a Raspberry Pi that's folding at home, but it's always good to be secure anyways. Okay, now if you don't have PuTTY installed, you can use PowerShell. So just hit the Windows key, type in PowerShell, launch that, and then just type in SSH. Then you're going to type in Pi with the at symbol and then the IP address that you found for your Raspberry Pi. And then from here, you're going to want to type in the password, which is Raspberry. And then you're logged into your Raspberry Pi on PowerShell. So I'm going to close out this session and close out of that. Okay, so now that we are currently logged into our Raspberry Pi, we can go ahead and start installing folding at home. So the way we're going to do this is make a directory. So mkdirect, and then do exactly what it says in the video. So here we're making uh, a directory, and then we're going to change our location into that directory. Okay, and now that we are in this directory, we're going to use wget to install or to download the installer. And let me go ahead and maximize this so it's easier to see. So I can just right click and then click enter. Okay, so now that has finished uh, saving, finished downloading. So the next thing is to do sudo dpackage. So I'm just going to copy that, right click, and then here you're going to want to enter in your username. So this is where we go back to our Banano. So I'm going to open up my Brave browser, and then we're going to go to Banano Miner. Now I'll post this in the description. And then we're going to want to copy our account address. So this address right here, just click copy. And then you're going to want to enter it in right here. So paste it and click start now. So this will be your user ID. Make sure that you copy this correctly. If you don't, then your banana will either go nowhere or to a different account. So we're going to go in here and then we're going to paste it into here. Looks like we can't paste it. so. We're going to have to type it in. One second. So AM4YUO 0U12N2. You're going to click OK. And then you're going to type in the team number. So backspace to back out the zero. And then do 23. Four nine eight zero. Now I'm pretty sure the team number should be pretty much the same for everybody on the Banano team. And then click enter. And now if you wanted to get additional points, you could create a pass key. However, this tutorial will not be doing that. Um, you probably want to, you would not get that extra much uh, just doing a Raspberry Pi. So we're just going to click enter right here. We're going to do full because we want to blast our Raspberry Pi as much as we can although it might die. And then we absolutely do want it to automatically start, so click yes. Now we can click top and check to see if folding at home client is running. 
we can see that it is running indeed. Alrighty, so we confirm that the folding at home client is running. However, we don't currently know the progress it's making on the work units. And also, what if we want to change the power we give folding at home from high to medium? Or what if we mistyped our user ID? Well, in order to interact with the folding at home client, we're going to need to telnet into that um, service. So you'll need to install telnet. So do sudo app dash git install telnet. Now, I already installed telnet on this Raspberry Pi for testing purposes. And then once you have this installed, you're going to use the telnet uh, command type out localhost and then the port number is going to be 36330 sorry about that localhost and now we're in the folding at home client command ser server so in order to get all the commands you can type out help and then click enter and it'll give you all the commands so we can see there's a command for um, uptime so uptime we can see that my client has been running for one hour now what you probably want to find is the progress or how long it will take for our work unit to complete. And this can be used, found using the qinfo command. So if we just typed out qinfo and click enter, we can look under here. So right now you can see the percent done after one hour is only 1.4% and the ETA is 3.34 days. Now that's a pretty long time. However, the points per day is 2,473. And the deadline is, now this is the universal time, so you might have to convert this to your local time, which is uh, about six days from now. So, you know, we do have enough time to finish the work unit. However, we won't get any banana until this work unit is finished, which will be three days. Now, work units vary on how big they are, so you might get one that takes less than a day, one that takes around this time, or maybe even a little bit longer. So your banana payout might be um, not every day, but it should even out over time. Now, what if you want to change uh, the power that you give to the client? So in order to do this, you can type out the options command. This will list out all the options that you currently have. So I changed mine to medium during the testing that I was doing. So if you want to change this to high, you'll do options type out the option you want to change. So our, in our case, it's going to be power. And then we want to change it to high. And it appears I typed something wrong. So let's tell now back into it. Let's do option um, power. Let's do option power. And then we might have to do quotes. So let's do high, or maybe it is full. All right, yeah, so the option to give it full power is full. So we can type out options again. We can't use up arrows in this. And now it's at full. So now that we have that, if we just exit out of this by doing quit, it might not save it. So you're going to save your changes. So click save. And now that uh, changes are saved, and we can exit out of this. And then if we enter back into it, and we do options, we can see that it saved the power option of what we have. So now we can also change our username in case we mistype that, or our team ID in case you mistype that. And there you have it. So that should give you everything that you need to know how to install uh, Folding at Home on a Raspberry Pi and how to uh, earn Banana with doing medical research. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. All right, bye.